Welcome to Sports Guy Talking. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about the impact that Victor Wimbanyana could have on the team that ends up drafting him in the 2023 NBA Draft. It has basically been a foregone conclusion that he will be the number one overall pick as he is considered to be a generational talent. In fact, Victor Wimbanyana has so much potential to the point where he is getting compared to LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Before I say anything else though, I want to present you guys with a topic question. So here it is, where will Victor Wimbanyana play next season? And honestly, it depends on who wins the lottery. Everybody knows that Victor Wimbanyana is going to be the number one overall pick. That's not even a question mark. Victor Wimbanyana is so good that he is considered to be a future all-time great. He has all the tools necessary to be a great basketball player. He can jump really high. He can dunk the basketball really hard. He's got a plethora of moves that he can make. He's got good handling skills with the basketball. He knows how to dribble effectively. He knows knows how to pass the ball effectively, he knows how to make his jump shots, and here's the thing with Victor Wimbenyana too, he doesn't even need to be a great jump shooter in order to be a great player, you just look at the length that Victor Wimbenyana has, and when you look at his length, it's pretty incredible, he's got a wingspan of 8 feet, which is basically unheard of, I mean I don't even know how he managed to get that, because it doesn't even seem physically possible for a human being to make, but that's exactly what Victor Wimbenyana has done, and more importantly, Victor Wimbenyana has skill. It's not that he's just tall, so he's not one of those I just made it to the NBA because I'm seven feet and not a lot of people in the world are seven feet. No, he made it to the NBA because he has a lot of skill to his game. He can shoot the mid-range well, he can shoot the three ball somewhat well. I know that he only shot 29.5% from the three-point line in his international career, but let's be honest, a player of his size, if he's knocking down about 30% of his shots from the three-point line, defenders are gonna have a hard time guarding him because he's gonna be so good in the paint and his elevation is so high when he jumps. He knows how to jump for the basketball he knows how to dunk he has good court vision he knows how to get rebounds as well and the fact that he got over 10 rebounds a game on average this past season in his European league that he was playing in, that's really impressive on his front. Whoever gets Victor Wimbanyana is going to be getting a game changer and a franchise altering player. But enough rave about Victor Wimbanyana. We know what he can do. He's really got no weaknesses and the NBA has never really seen a player like him because he's just so tall, so big, so freakishly athletic. The only thing you could say about Victor Wimbanyana is, man, I wish he could kind of bulk up a little bit because I don't want him to become injury prone but at least you could say you know what he's not going to have that overweight problem like Zion Williamson has had in the NBA and the reason I say Zion Williamson is because he was supposed to be a generational talent in the NBA but all he has done is get injured year after year after year and become a waste of money on the New Orleans Pelicans and he might be known as one of the biggest busts in NBA history but Victor Wembanyama is not going to have that problem if anything Victor Wembanyama needs to learn how to gain some weight because when you look at it from his weight perspective Victor Wembanyama is pretty light he needs to get bigger because when he's going up against guys like Anthony Davis, when he's going up against guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo, when he's going up against guys like Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid, he's going to need to bulk up because those guys are pretty big and they're also pretty athletic just like him too. The good news for Victor Wimbanyana is the NBA is not really a physical league anymore. His lack of physicality that he might have, it might be covered by the fact that the NBA is becoming less and less physical year in and year out. So that projects his game really well. And the game has become more skill-based anyway more so than more physical base so Victor Wimbanyana he is the definition of relying on his game with skill instead of physicality although he can certainly be physical he can dunk the basketball anytime he wants to that's how good Victor Wimbanyana is but you look at the teams that could potentially get Victor Wimbanyana there's a lottery in the NBA going on it's not like the NFL where if the worst team has the worst record they get the number one overall pick automatically it does not work like that in the NBA they do a lottery where all the teams that did make the playoffs they enter themselves into the lottery and there's 14 teams in it now the good news is for the teams that are at the bottom of the league or at the top of the lottery depending on how you want to call it they get the better chances of landing a guy like Victor Wimbenyana here's the thing though if you have the number one overall pick though you only have a 14 percent chance of getting a guy like Victor Wimbenyana so you look at the Detroit Pistons you look at the Houston Rockets and you look at the San Antonio
Indiana Spurs. They all got a 14% chance of winning the lottery. And then there's the Charlotte Hornets, my team, at 12.5%. And then you got the Trailblazers at 10.5%. And then everybody else is basically scattered around with the low percentages. You look at the team that has the chance to get Victor Wembanyama, despite the fact that they don't have a top four pick, is the Dallas Mavericks. They could be the sleeper team that ends up getting him. Because let's be honest, the NBA, what are they all about? They are all about getting stars in marketable places where people can watch them night in and night out and where people will get them talking all the time. And this is where small market teams have a distinct disadvantage. It's the fact that they don't have that marketability on a national level. Some small market teams that might be good, but they're not great. They're not going to be relevant on a national level or that team might not already have a star in place. Well, when you look at the Dallas Mavericks, are they a big market? Well, they're a big enough market and they already got two stars on their roster, which is Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie Irving, he might not return to the Dallas Mavericks next season, but even if the Mavericks don't get Kyrie Irving back, they get cap space opened up so maybe they could sign some free agents to try to support Luka Doncic because the Mavericks supporting cast around Luka Doncic has not been that good so far. But if the Mavericks could somehow get the number one overall pick and somehow win the lottery, that is going to give Luka Doncic so much help. Could you imagine an international duel of Luka Doncic and Victor Wimbenyana? I mean, if you're an opposing defense, how do you stop that? And more importantly, Victor Wimbenyana provides good defense with his length and size. And he's going to give the Mavericks some much needed rim protection, which is going to help out the Mavericks defense, which is really what their main problem has been with anyways to begin with. So you look at a team with Victor to win Benyano and Luka Doncic that could be really nice so if you're the NBA and you're doing the lottery odds and you're doing the ping pong balls you're really hoping that the Dallas Mavericks end up finding a way to get Victor win Benyano. now if you're the Detroit Pistons or the Houston Rockets you would think ideally you have a good shot to get him but honestly I don't think either of those teams will end up winning the lottery because you know why I don't think that because those teams don't have enough interest to get a guy like Victor win Benyano to get there the fans are not going to be interested in him if he goes to Detroit because a lot of people People do not care about the Detroit Pistons whatsoever. And if you're the Houston Rockets, they've been so bad for the last few years that honestly, I don't think a lot of people even care about the Houston Rockets anymore at this point. And that's just in the city of Houston. And that's saying something because the Houston Texans, on the other hand, are a horrible football team. But at least people would care about the Texans more than they would care about the Houston Rockets. But it's a baseball city in there right now. Look, all they care about is the Houston Astros being a good baseball team. But I don't think Victor Wimbanyan is going to end up getting drafted by the Houston Rockets. I just don't see the Houston Rockets winning the lottery. So the other team that has a 14% chance is going to be the San Antonio Spurs. I think the San Antonio Spurs are going to end up winning the lottery because the Spurs, they have won the lottery before under Greg Popovich. The last time they won the number one overall pick, they got to use that pick to select Tim Duncan, who ends up winning five championships for the San Antonio Spurs and is known as the greatest power forward ever to play the game of basketball. If they can get a guy like Victor Wimbenyano, they may have found their replacement for the next Tim Duncan and the San Antonio Spurs may return back to being a competitive basketball team once again for the foreseeable future. If you're the San Antonio Spurs, I feel really good about their chances of winning the lottery because of the fact that you got Greg Popovich on your side. Greg Popovich, he seems to have a good luck charm when he's on there. And if you're the San Antonio Spurs, you need some much needed stardom. And the NBA surely wants the San Antonio Spurs to be a good basketball team. Even though they're a small market basketball team, the San Antonio Spurs have a rich history of winning. And if you're Adam Silver, you might want the San Antonio Spurs to return back to their prominent ways because they've been terrible for a good while now. They've had some down years in recent memory. Greg Popovich is going to want to get that changed there's a reason why he got down the mediocre roster they had in san antonio last offseason that was so he could potentially get the right to get the number one overall pick and this could pay off if he ends up winning the lottery so i think the san antonio spurs are going to end up winning the lottery now as for the charlotte hornets we're currently behind them at 12.5 percent i'm hoping that the charlotte hornets get victor Wimbenyana. i'm a hornets fan i want to make sure that the hornets get the best players possible and you think about a team with victor Wimbenyana and lamella ball that could certainly make some noise in the eastern conference because the eastern conference conference is really not that good anyways i mean sure the eastern conference is top heavy but you look at some of the teams that are deeper down the list they're just not all that outside of the miami heat i know the miami heat made a run to the eastern conference finals but that's because the miami heat have a very strong culture and an elite head coach in place and they also got playoff jimmy butler in there as well but you look at some of the lower tier teams in the eastern conference like the atlanta hawks and the chicago bulls they're really not that impressive to begin with anyway so if the charlotte horns could get 
Victor Wim Benyana to pair up with LaMelo Ball and they can avoid the injury bug somewhat next season. This is a team that can make some noise in the play-in tournament. But ultimately though, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm a realistic Hornets fan. I don't see the Hornets winning the lottery. There's a reason why the Hornets haven't won the lottery under the Michael Jordan era. Ultimately though, I see the San Antonio Spurs winning that lottery and it's also because of the fact that the San Antonio Spurs don't really have any marketable players whatsoever right now. I mean honestly, the most notable player on the San Antonio Spurs right now is Kel and Johnson, a small forward that I'm pretty sure most people outside of the San Antonio Spurs have no idea who I'm talking about. But the point is, the San Antonio Spurs, they need marketability. They need star players in the roster. They need some star power. They need Greg Popovich to return back to being relevant on a national level. That means that the NBA is going to want the Spurs to win the lottery. And even though it's a bunch of ping pong balls that determine who ends up winning the lottery, ultimately, though, Adam Silver and the NBA are going to make sure that the San Antonio Spurs will end up winning the lottery as they will find their replacement for Tim Duncan. That's what I'm predicting. So that is why I predict the Spurs winning the sweepstakes to get the number one overall pick as they will spend that draft pick on Victor Wimbenyana. Remember, go ahead and subscribe to Sports Guy Talking, like the video, and please comment down below. If you guys do that, I may shout you guys out in my Instagram story every Monday. That will be for the at Dustin S. Tran Instagram account. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Dustin S. Tran and at Sports Guy Talking. Also, go follow me on Twitter at Dustin S. Tran. Again, go ahead and do those things that I just told you guys to go do. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the content. That was just produce. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed that video. Want more sports guy talking? The home of great sports content? Make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from sports guy talking. Go ahead and like the video. Comment down below. Check the description box on the video in order to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel, Sports Guy Talking.